All right, so I want to welcome you guys to our very first FLIP follow-up session. And in science, as I mentioned in our orientation, the FLIP follow-ups are a little bit different. So rather than covering one specific lesson, I take um, a couple of concepts out of the unit that we're all working in. Um, so keep in mind that students started as early as August 5th, and I had students start even yesterday. So you guys are all over the place in where you are in the course. So if I pick one lesson only, um, it's going to, you know, not really hit everybody. So Taj, for that, if you go to chat and up at the top, there is a little drop down menu on that bar. And it says, um, show event messages, and it probably has a check by it. So if you uncheck that, it will stop showing you every time someone enters the room. Yes. So if anyone wants to do that, it will stop those notifications. You do not have to take notes during the flip follow-up. So great question. All right, so again, we're just going to be covering um, fun topics and going over things that you have seen so far working in Unit 1. All right, just making sure I don't have questions so far. So as we jump in, our motivation for today is science is simply the word we use to describe a method of organizing our curiosity. So I think you guys will start to see that as we um, go through Unit 1. It talks a lot about what science is, what physical science is, and what we're going to be doing with that this semester. So just a reminder for you guys, especially if you're new, you guys can use the chat features at appropriate times. Make sure you use appropriate language and stay focused on the lesson. Uh, make sure all your words are appropriate in chat. You cannot exchange personal information, but there is a school directory that was sent out. So if you find somebody that you want to connect with, you can check there. And our session is recorded for students who want to watch at a later time. So while your names are not showing, it does pick up all the chat. And it can be linked to the participant. So just a warning there. And if you are on webcam, then you're consenting that your little face in the recording will be showing. Um, but as you can see right now, your faces are so small that unless you pop out that box and make it really big, which you can if you would like, um, you probably can't be identified. So those of you joining us on webcam, hello. I'm so glad to see your faces. And we will jump right in. So a couple of things if you did not see this slide earlier, with our groups being so large coming in to this August cohort, um, just a reminder to stay focused on the content that's on the screen. You can use private chat. That would be you need to double click the person's name in the participant box. If you double click their name, it'll allow you to send them a private message, but it does still show up on my screen, so I can still see that. So if you like to say, oh, Ms. Reister is so boring, I can see that. Um, so please don't spam the chat. That's uh, definitely annoying for those trying to follow along, and I cannot see questions because it goes too quickly. And again, just make sure your comments and your language are kind and appropriate. When we get to whiteboard tools, um, please make sure you're not scribbling on the screen. I usually have to just remind my sixth grade students of that. I think most of you guys in eighth grade know better than to scribble on the screen or erase other people's work. So I think you guys are definitely old enough to not have to have that reminder. And lastly, um, these sessions are not required. So if you are one that logs in and walks away, you don't have to be in the live session. Um, it doesn't add to your grade. It doesn't, um, you know, anything like that. So if you um, are not going to engage with us, um, just even with listening. 
listening, then you don't have to stay in. It is completely up to you. All right? So our objective today is we want to interact with our peers, and we have a great group here. So welcome to all 36 of you. I'm so glad you're here today, and I'm so glad I'm here today, which means uh, that awful hurricane that came through missed us just by a hair. So um, sadly, it went over and did a lot of damage in Louisiana, but um, here in Houston, Texas, we were okay. So I'm very thankful for that today. Um, we are going to interact with the science curriculum. Um, that means that we will be taking a look at concepts out of Unit 1 and playing around with those. So Ryan, you're a fellow Houstonian. Glad you are safe, too. And um, we definitely want to have fun. Oh, Andrew, I hope you guys are okay over there. It looks like you are with power, so that means you are probably in a good area. All right, so we um, will jump on in, and our first thing I want to remind you guys of is the unit note guide. Um, for unit one, I did put it into the lesson in lesson 1.01. You would find the link to that note guide. Um, but if you didn't, they are on the home page in the announcements. Scroll down towards the bottom. You'll see a little slide that looks like this. Just click unit one and print those out. So when you're done filling them out, you can handwrite or type. Um, one, you can use them on the test. And two, you can submit those for extra credit after your test. So definitely important in helping you succeed there. All right, so our first thing we're going to start with, science of the day. We're going to take a look at a video on the metric system. Um, you always get a little review on metric system uh, in science when you get started. Because as a reminder, we use the metric system in science, and we'll talk that, about that a little more. Um, but you'll notice that in the medical field, they use that as well. Um, so something handy to know. So here comes our first web tour. If it doesn't play for you on the screen, then I will put the link in chat and you can click it there. The entire world uses the metric system for measurements. The entire world, except for Liberia, Myanmar, and the United States of America. In the USA, we use English units like inches, feet, pounds, quarts, and gallons, which is fine, except for that you have to memorize or look up the strange conversions to get from one unit to another. To avoid confusion, scientists around the world have adopted the metric system, which is based on multiples of 10. The base unit for measuring length is the meter, the base unit for measuring mass is the gram, and the base unit for volume is the liter. In order to measure anything smaller or larger than these base units, you can add a prefix, that's a multiple of 10. There are six prefixes that go smaller and larger than the base unit that I'll show you. There are lots more than this, but these are the ones that you're most likely to come in contact with. In the middle are the base units with a value of one, like one meter, one liter, or one gram. On the right will be smaller values, and to the left will be larger values. If we want to use a unit that's 10 times smaller than the base value because a meter, liter, or gram are too big, we can go down to the 1 tenth and use the prefix deci, which is abbreviated with the letter D. Then you can have a decimeter, deciliter, or decigram. One hundredth is centi, with the letter C for centimeter, centiliter, and centigram. And one one thousandth is milli, letter M, for millimeter, milliliter, and milligram. We can go to larger units when we're measuring larger things, too. Ten times larger is deca, and is abbreviated DA to distinguish it from deci. So you can have decameters, decaliters, and decagrams. One hundred times larger than one unit is hecto, letter H, for hectometer, hectoliter, and hectogram. And 1,000 times larger than the base unit is kilo, or K, for kilometer, kiloliter, and kilogram. I use a mnemonic to remember the order from kilo to milli, and it's King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. But you can make up your own to help you remember their order. Let's see how to use this information. You can take any prefix and attach it to any metric base unit. If you chose kilo and gram, you'd have a kilogram with the symbol kg. Or you could choose deca and meter and get a decameter with the symbol dam. Or you could choose milli and liter and get milliliter with the symbol m with a capital L. You could make any combination you need. 
There's one other really great thing about the metric system, and that's how easy it is to convert from one type of measurement to another. When you write the units out in order of largest to smallest, the conversions can be very easy. Remember that the smaller values are on the right, and the larger values are on the left. Let's say you had 100 milligrams, and you wanted to know how many grams this was. First, you look at the prefix. It's milli. So we're going to start from milli and move to the left until we get to grams. We have to move it one, two, three times. This means we need to move the decimal point three places to the left. Start with deca and move it to the right until you get to milli. One, two, three, four times. So move the decimal one, two, three, four places to the right and you get 25,000 milliliters. Let's try two more. Practice using your mnemonic to write out the first letters of the prefixes. Let's convert 4.26 centimeters to kilometers. Start at centi and move one, two, three, four, five places to the left. Move the decimal the same direction, the same number of times, and you get 0 0.0000426 kilometers. It's good to do a logic check and see if your answer makes sense. 4.26 centimeters is a very small measurement already, so it makes sense that it would be an extremely small fraction of a kilometer. Let's do one last conversion. 0 0.0024 hectoliters to milliliters. Start at hecto and go. One, two, three, four, five places to the right, and move the decimal the same number of spaces. And you get 240 milliliters, which is probably a better unit for the smaller volume anyway. Thank you for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Science Pet. All right, guys. So you may have heard some new terms there. Sometimes um, when we're learning the metric system, we only practice with the very basic ones. So you may have seen some new um, hecta. I saw some comments there, deca. Um, and the more practice you use the metric system with, um, the more you would see those terms and things like that. So we know that the metric system is on a base of 10, so that does make it easy to use. <clears throat> so as we move on in the notes, this is something you may want to include, um, but in the content I noticed that they explain a difference, but it might need to be pointed out again, that we have metric units and we have SI units. So there is a difference here. Okay, we have the metric system and then the system international. So the difference that you'll see is in uh, math. When we're talking about metric units, the base unit is uh, gram, that abbreviate abbreviation. When we're talking about SI units, it's different. The base standard that they'll always refer to is, and I say base not meaning um, like the base. We know that gram would be the base of kilogram, but um, the standard that they always go to. So if you're solving a problem in SI and you need to, um, you know, write your final answer out, it would need to be in kilograms. Whereas just if we're talking about metric units, most of these are in grams. So the other difference is temperature. When we're talking about temperature and metric, our um, go-to is Celsius. But when we're talking about temperature in SI units, it is Kelvin. So there is a difference there, but the others are the same. So you may want to note that in metric distance, the meter, I'm sorry, mass, the gram and temperature is the um, differences in metric and SI units. All right, any questions there before I go on? All right. So going on, we have a game to play. I know you guys also got into a little bit of um, scientific experiments and talking about 
um, variables and different words that we use in an experiment. So um, this is a fun game. And you're going to be able to play this one on your own. So when I put it on the whiteboard, every person has the option on their screen to start playing. If it doesn't work, and sometimes it's a little slower, I suggest clicking the link that I'm going to put in chat. Okay, so give me one second. It's coming over to chat. I would click that one. It sometimes just loads a lot slower in um, Blackboard. And then the other thing that happens is when we all click on it, it kind of bogs it down and gets even slower. So if you check, I mean, click the um, link in chat. And I'm going to click it so it pops up over here. It definitely goes up a little faster. And it goes to a screen that says word Orama. So you can see on the blackboard, the white screen here, it's still loading. But if you just click that link in chat, you go to Wordorama. All right? And once you click play, <clears throat> you click anywhere, you can skip the introduction if you would like. Read the sentence and choose the word that fits. All right. So on my end, I clicked it and opened it in another screen. On the blackboard screen, it's still loading. All right, so I'm probably going to close that out. And again, remind you, here we go. Click the link here. So um, just go through and see how well you do on some of the science words. And then when you're done, if you want to post your score, great. All right, so we're going to take a couple of minutes to go through and do that. Is there anyone it's not working for? All right, Amanda, you went fast. Good job. If there's anyone it's not working for, I can share my screen. Not working for some of you? Okay, so I'll share my screen over here. And if you are playing on your own, you may want to turn me down for just a second. Um, we'll just do a couple of these for those of you that aren't seeing it at all. You guys can tell me the answer in chat. Observation is part of the blank method. So if you want to tell me which word. Yes. Good job. Okay. Fabric or cloth. Fabric or cloth. Is that a reaction chemical effect or material? All right. We're doing great. A person or thing that serves as a sign. Is it an examine, property, determine, or indicator? The weather will blank our plans for a picnic. Effect. Great. To look closely at or to inspect something. The old book was blank and one of a kind. Unique. Investigation. This one's kind of hard. It's a synonym for investigation. That means it's the same. Experiment. Good job. 
Synonym for concentration. Seems kind of hard to use. The concentration of something. Density? All right, good job. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing here. For those of you that weren't able to play, we got through at least half of them. So let me close that out. Just penguin keep talking. Okay, hold on. There we go. Closing him out. All right, so just some fun practice with some different words that you'll be seeing and when we're talking about experiments. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is go into a quizzes game. And I think you guys will enjoy this one. Quizzes, it can be a little bit difficult on this. We're talking about variables. And variables are one of the things that students struggle with the most. So um, a, good, a good thing to take notes on that if you want. Um, I'm going to give you the link to join. All right, so I'll put it in a couple of times, and then I'm going to set it up so I can share my screen, and you guys can get the game code. All right, hopefully you can see the screen. The game code is 158977. Here's the link again in case you need it. Make sure your names are appropriate. Um, you can put a fun name in, or you can put your real name in, it doesn't matter. All right, so we have 37 of you in here. That includes me. So um, we have 15 people as of now. So we're getting there. Put the link in again in case you need it. One five eight nine seven seven. You can leave it anytime here. Yep, it is up to you how long you stay in a session. All right, anybody else trying to get in before we start? All right, if you want me to hang on, let me know. Put the link one more time. I do not know if you have that option on the character picture. I'm not sure how it, it uh Ryan says no, you can't, maybe, or no, somebody above Ryan said no. Tanash said no, you cannot do that. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Anybody else trying to get in, you can still join even after the game starts. So you guys go ahead. Here we go. Recording again, and I'm going to turn the volume down. So as we wrap up, you guys are welcome to play. A couple of things I want to show you. I know you might be heading into another class. Um, make sure you're checking out the flipped recordings. I need to update my slides. They're not on our homepage like this anymore. They are in um, under content. So check that out. And then if you have questions for me, Hang out, we can talk about those, but otherwise you guys are free to head on to